Well, today I'm, I'm really grateful. I woke up and I'm breathing, so I think, well, that's a good start to the day. And no, seriously, I'm, I'm grateful for that because we never know, don't we? Um, we never know when we close our eyes at night what's going to happen. And thankfully, we don't know. But anyway, I'm here, alive and, and well today. Um, and I'm, I'm so pleased I'm here amongst friends because that's, I think, one of, they're one of the major things that make my life worthwhile. Um, communicating, being with people I feel happy with, where we can chat and discuss things that can be quite personal, but it's actually easy to do that because they, they're understanding. And we can also have a very good laugh. And in my view, laughter is the, is the best medicine. Yeah. I don't have time. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yeah. I like to now. No, just I'm three quarters of the way through uh, a, a women's rights project, which um, is actually the third project, project that I've attended, um, organised by Ludini. And this one uh, is, as the title suggests, all women, with uh, Nadine being the honorary lady amongst us, which we're all very grateful for. Um, we have uh, done a lot of writing, as the title suggests. Um, we have played a lot of games to unlock our minds, both sitting down with word exercises and also moving around this space, doing all kinds of interesting things, uh, like following our nose, which was an exercise where we had to pretend that our nose was leading us through, through life, and then our big toe, etc. Now that may sound rather stupid, but actually we all had a very good laugh and we felt very energised by it. And so uh, that led us back to sitting back in our circle and um, doing a mind share on um, actually what is important to us in life. And we had so many answers and we had a wonderful uh, board on the wall to show that. The project as a whole has been very um, affirming with regard to self-esteem. Um, it, it would have been extremely unlikely that three months ago I would be standing here now saying anything. I would be the person who perhaps crept through the door and sat on a chair and hoped I wouldn't be asked anything. And, and that's perfectly true. So you can see, see what a difference these sessions have made to me and indeed to, to everybody else because you can see everybody growing and blossoming in the so what, um, what I'd like us to do now is developing on from this morning, we're going to do um, an activity called lines, where <clears throat> there's lots of bits of paper on the floor, and I can get some more as well. And bearing it in mind that what we're doing is writing, we're going to write lines for three characters, just to, so I, on different bits of paper. So on one bit of paper, I might write, good morning, madam, for instance, whatever. Um, We've got two patients, like I say, and a psychiatrist, and they're in a waiting room, and then in the psychiatrist's uh, office as well. Um, Penny walked into the psychiatrist's office, nervous, rather nervously, and thought, I don't really know why I'm here. Um, that's what the psychiatrist would say. No, <laughs> just pick a random one, Lisa, don't worry um, about it. Psychiatrist. Okay, where did all the wallpaper go? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the psychiatrist said that? Uh, Penny. 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 The psychiatrist. Meanwhile, back in the psychiatrist office, um, he was thinking about all these rotting biscuits at home. <laughs> They don't. Oh, they do. <laughs> it's getting interesting. <laughs> the question is, what makes life worth living for you? Having a sense of purpose and giving something back and being oh, altruistic, I suppose, and helping others in some way, whether that be in a paid capacity, which unfortunately I'm not able to do at the moment, or um, 
through voluntary work or spending time with an elderly family member who needs your support or being with my baby sister Eve who's five, uh, get a lot of joy out of her company. Music, drama, picture books, as I collect them, uh, jewellery, especially silver and in matching sets, amber and peridot, walking, writing of course. I would say definitely good company, so good friends, good family, um, a nice relaxing holiday somewhere, being outdoors by the sea. Sunsets and um, my mum's cat's big fluffy paws and um, my cats when I have them and kindness from that comes unexpectedly that's always nice um, friends, she have to say that. Um, poets, the sea, um, candles, rain, cold weather, winter, I love winter, ice, snow, frost, all that sort of stuff. A good cup of tea, some nice cheese, and some nice wine. But that's just me being uh, materialistic. <laughs> As I was saying, I'm quite a family. Excuse me, I'm quite a family orientated person. Um, and I enjoy writing, hence why I'm at this um, women's writing workshop. We've got what we call our, our women's rights island on the table there, which if, um, if like, we ask anybody in terms of the project, if you'd like to put your name on it, and then as we go along, we're unrolling it, just add anything you want to on there at all. It's kind of a process and journey of the project but it's if, if there's something that you like a poem you want to write or a thought or an activity you've enjoyed or just anything at all that you want to add to it and we've got various sequins and glue and so be as artistic as you want with it. Now for the next um, half hour or so the group is going to share with you the work that they produced. We've done this in, they've done this in five weeks, so it's been, it's been a really short period of time and the work they've produced is just amazing. Hello, my name's Deborah and I'm, I'm going to, um, I've written a poem based on a key word that came up in one of the sessions and it was about memories. I'm Birmingham born and bred, but I'm from an uh, African Caribbean Jamaican background. So I'm going to talk about one of my beloved cousins who passed away a few years ago. And his name was Manny. And I loved Manny because he stood out. Tall, dark and handsome with his 70s afro. Handmade snakeskin platform shoes, he knew how to smooth the ladies and they loved him. Long fur coat, latest suits, bell bottom trousers of course, with a heart as big as the Empire Windrush and the ladies rushed him. Fur factory may be, now not totally politically correct, then for the select few. Manny knew how to boast and charm ladies on his arm. He wasn't all bad. He made his family glad. I love the style. I think back and smile. Yeah. Personally, this brummy couldn't give a shiny shite, as long as most people are tolerant and the babbies are all right. <laughs> Do I sit on a sofa or a settee, go for a quick whittle or a nice long wee? If you judge folks by their accent, you don't know what you might miss. Now, excuse, excuse my crude mannerisms while I saunter off for a piss. As long as the jaspers don't add number the bees, it will be all right, Lush, you will see. Have a little patience with the forceful urban cadence. Language is evolving blood because the youths are integrating. Authors sometimes use long words to sound sophisticated and clever. Let me acquiesce to your assumption that I don't understand. Few academic qualifications to sell myself, no first, seconds or even thirds, and certainly no letters. 
A bread roll to me is called a cob, it ain't just a male baby horse. Don't correct my speech now, pretentious child, a knob isn't just a door handle. I call my ketchup bread sauce. Now I must be gooing sadly, I'm off to catch a very light buzz. Industrial culture, varied and a bit dopey sounding. Come over to the dark side, cast aside your received pronunciation, because it's really proper Boston being one of us. <laughs> There was only face value, and nothing was too cruel. The mist rose on an autumn morning and clung to the long grass. Condensation stayed outside the glass. Can't look at my mum, because she's <laughs> making me cry. Now the moisture soaks in. Sorry, now the moisture soaks in, blown by a wind of evil and corruption. Simply reality, nothing new unless you are a girl. Self-delusion was a force field, or was that innocence, repelling whatever came close? That was the last time I was a girl. It's still a man's world. They plague us, haunt us, taunt us, love us, mould us, shape us, and make us. We are the stitches that patch society. It's slipping so fast into the depth of immorality. All this reflected back from the mirror, when I look in a mirror, a mirror of tomorrow, I see a toboggan slipping on the ice, worn smooth by men. The first time I saw this, I was still a girl then. The next one is getting better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to share with you now something that we thought we'd like to share, so we need our four actors on stage. This morning, we all wrote some lines on bits of paper that a psychiatrist, a receptionist, or a patient might say at, at any point in this sort of situation. We're going to randomly just hand out lines now. I'm going to be the um, director, but I'm not going to say a word. All I'm going to do is direct the characters to speak. So when I point them, they are going to speak and say their line. Fancy a dance. Do you know how far the beach is from the sea? I'm getting very ambidextrous. And my toes are twitching too. <laughs> oh, bacon and eggs, bacon and eggs. <laughs> I'm a pineapple mother. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's wise? <laughs> Where's the nearest sparkling planet? I need to go back there now. <laughs> when can we return to the museum? <laughs> Everybody took part in the project was really unique and and valuable and invaluable and every one of them brought something really special to the project. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's a women's group, we don't care if for one day we're going to be really good. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.